Hello everyone, this is Gail from Gail's Upstairs Studio. I hope you're all doing well. As you know, if you watched my video last week, we are cleaning out a room that is right next to my studio and I have a lot of extra stuff in my studio right now and I don't have a lot of room to move around or do any projects, so I hope you don't mind another different kind of video. This week, I thought it might be nice to kind of celebrate the little tiny workhorses that I use every day in my studio that aren't pretty, that some of them not, aren't even art supplies, but I use them every day and they're dependable and most of them not very expensive. So I thought what I would do is go through several different things. First of all, I'm going to clean this off and show you something that's underneath. One of the biggest things that I use, I will say about every day I'm in this studio, is this mat. It's from Fiskars and it's sold in like quilting departments at like Walmart and Joann's. I believe this one came from Joann's. I keep it right on this cabinet and I use it all the time for just rough measurements. If I'm getting ready to mat something, if I'm lettering and I need to um, mark off some places, I just lay it on here instead of taking out a big ruler. It makes things a lot quicker and I get an instant reference um, of measurement without having to dig a bunch of things out. It is very large. It pretty much covers the whole top front of my cabinet and it really does a wonderful job. I don't use it for cutting much but you can. Um, it's a forgiving mat and you can use a rotary cutter or a blade, anything you need on it. So that's number one. This pile has a few different things in it. Um, this here is a paper cutter. I have had this one for several years and I had one for many years before that. Um, there is a wire here, um, it is actually in this piece here, that the blade goes up on and in my old one it broke. Um, other than that, it still worked, but I bought a new one. I've had this one for probably two or three years. And I use it a lot for cutting down paper, um, any kind of paper. Watercolor paper tends to chowder the blade a little bit, so I have a guillotine kind that I use for that, but I use this one way more often. Next is this scoring board. This is actually a Martha Stewart scoring board, and I've had this for probably 10 years, maybe even longer. And it's great for folding paper for cards, um, making boxes, all kinds of things. And it came with a bone folder when I bought it, and I since lost the bone folder. But inside here, I have this tool that is meant for um, the Cricut. Um, it isn't Cricut branded, I bought it at Dollar Tree but it has a little ball on the top of it and you can lay your paper down and then score that way. And it works very well. So I keep this in here. And that's what this is. Next is tape. I have several different kinds of tape here. Uh, this here is washi tape, and I have many rolls of many different sizes that I bought in one package from Hobby Lobby, I believe it was, three years ago maybe, and I still have plenty left. I don't really care what patterns or anything like that it has on it because I don't use it for decoration. I use it to tape down watercolor paper or any paper actually that I'm working on so it doesn't buckle. Um, and you do have to be a little careful. Um, some papers take it better than others. It will pull the paper apart in some cases if you're not careful. 
But if I'm working on a delicate paper, all I do is I will unroll some and then adhere it down to a sweatshirt or something like that and it makes it makes some of the tack go away and that works very well. And this is regular old painter's tape. And how I use it most of the time, I use it for several different things, but my biggest use for it is if I'm using a canvas, this one happens to be a gallery wrapped one, so it's a nice thick one. If I am prepping a canvas, I will turn it over on its back and I will, this is still wrapped obviously, but um, just to show you, I will take down right up to the edge so that when I am base coating the front and the side, no paint gets on the back so that it's still nice and clean and professional looking. And I use that almost every time for that purpose. And then this tape is double-sided tape. And uh, it's Crafter Square from Dollar Tree. And it works very well. And because it's from Dollar Tree, it's not expensive. I use it for mounting small pictures, uh, small paintings. I don't use it for a lot of heavy, big pieces of like watercolor paper to mat because um, it doesn't hold as well. But on small projects, it works wonderful. I also use it to adhere card fronts to card blanks and it really works perfectly good for that and it's inexpensive so this might be something to keep your eye out for. This isn't tape and it doesn't look like much of anything actually. However. It is a very handy thing. I keep most of my watercolor paper scraps and Bristol board paper scraps because of the thickness. This is Bristol. This is watercolor paper. And all different kinds of sizes and shapes. This is just a small sampling. I have a pile of them actually. And I keep them and I use them to Maybe I've mixed two watercolors together and I really liked the way they looked. So I will just swatch some of that on there and write what the mix was. And I have a little card file that it, they sit in. Another use I have for them is this is a sketchbook that I've been working in for the last few months. And I this is kind of a big one and so I don't necessarily ever want to cover a page with one picture but I can use these to make little thumbnails and I just trace around it with a pencil and make my sketch in that space and then I have room for more and another thing you can use for that actually is the inside of the tape round if you want to do a circle one This next tray of goodies is sits right on my workbench and um, the tray itself I have two of those and one holds all of my da Vinci watercolor tubes for now and this one holds just a bunch of different little things first I will show you binder clips I use the big binder clips to hold my sketchbooks open and then I have several other sizes. This size I use to adhere the packaging that I wrap my watercolors in to hang on a nail or a command hook on displays at craft fairs. And this size, this tiny one, I use to clip on these small Liquitex bottles 
so that I can put them on a pegboard so I don't have to rifle around in a basket for them or anything. So they're very useful and those are only just a few uses for them. I'll pull this back in. This is a sort of a bone folder and I use it to uh, do the same kinds of things you would with a regular bone folder. Creasing paper, um, smoothing tape out, anything like that. And I bought this at Dollar Tree for a dollar. Dollar twenty-five actually now. And in that vein, this is another Cricut type tool. And I believe in the Cricut world it's called a weeder. So if you have um, your paper that you've run through your machine with all of your die cuts done, you can use this to lift out the middles of like letters and things like that. I use it for um, lifting the back off of this kind of tape and I also use it for weeding also. This next one is a Pentel 7.7 millimeter mechanical pencil. Very inexpensive, bought at Walmart, I think. I have two, and each one comes with the refills. When I say inexpensive, I think it's like under $6 maybe. Um, I really like the size of the lead. I like the weight of the pen. It's not really uh, the pencil. It's not really weighty at all. I have one that I keep in my pencil case and one that I keep in the studio. I use it for writing in my journal, for drawing. I love um, drawing measured lines with it because if you, for instance, need to... Um, you're doing a building and you need to do very thin lines and you don't want thick ones because you want to be able to watercolor and have it not show this is wonderful and it hugs right up really well and it isn't fancy it isn't anything that you know it isn't fancy at all but it does the job very well. It also has an eraser. I don't use the eraser in this very much. It is good for getting into tiny places. But for an eraser, I like to use this. It's my favorite Castell eraser. I've had it for like three, two or three years. I've used it all the time and I still have a lot left to go. I keep it in my pencil case and it works wonderfully and it folds right inside of itself and doesn't take much room up at all. Another writing instrument I use all the time is this, excuse me, is this Pigma Micron 03. I use it to do line and wash and watercolor. I use it to um, sketch with and I use it for writing also. I have several of these. One stays in my pencil case and I have a couple in the studio. These are called Pentel brush sign pens and there is another title for them. Another kind of branding for them too. I just have to find the right one. I want to say it's um, also called right here a Pentel Touch, and I have all kinds of colors. And the nice thing about them is they, if you look very carefully when you're purchasing them, I got mine on Amazon. If you get the brush sign pen and not just sign pen. The brush has a flexible nib. It isn't a brush pen like a Tombow is. It's like a flexible one, but it's not felt. And so that you can get really thin upstrokes and nice and thick downstrokes. So say if you're doing the word brush,
like so. It translates very well into modern calligraphy and brush lettering because your upstrokes and your downstrokes are very, um, very different from one another. So it works wonderfully for that. And the nicest thing about these is I've had them for more than two years and I have had not one run out of ink. I use them all the time. You have probably noticed them in lettering videos, the monthly lettering video that I do. And I um, address invitations with them for my daughter-in-law's wedding. I made projects for my grandson's baby shower, all kinds of things, and I've used them a lot. And they don't, they don't run out of ink, and because they're not felt, they don't fray. And they're not tremendously expensive. I can't remember how much I paid, but they were not very expensive. And the other thing I like is I bought them in a couple of different sets, but in this selection I have, I can cover all the seasons, I can be dark and moody with them, I can be light and fresh for spring, and I bet I use them more than two or three times a week for something or another. These next two things, are probably the least exciting things in the whole bunch, but are very, very useful. I'm gonna open this box, show you this first. This is from Crafter Square, which is a brand from Dollar Tree. And what they are, are tear-off palette sheets. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera. Yes, you can see right there. They are coated, they have a shine to them. And I use them to pour out my acrylic paints when I am doing a painting or working on glass or anything like that. And that paint I use is nice and thick so that it doesn't run off. It stays in a nice little pile. And when I'm done, I can just fold it in on itself, tear it off, and put it in the trash. So it works very well. And in order to elongate the life of the paint that is on here, because I use it for acrylics, you can't reconstitute acrylic. So once it's dry, it's dry. So what I do is, first of all, when you're using acrylics, it's important not to put too much on your palette. It's better to reload constantly than it is to be done with your project and have a big pile of acrylic left on your pad. But I um, will, if I'm working on a project and I have to step away, all I do is I take the palette. This box I bought at Michael's quite a long time ago. I think it's for scrapbook paper. And I just lay this in here and I close it. And it's not airtight, but it keeps the majority of the air from getting in and so I've actually um, gotten tired one night, late at night, and left this in here and came back first thing in the morning. And it wasn't exactly the same as it was when I left it, but I still had enough paint left to finish my project that hadn't dried yet. I will generally use it if I, only, if I know I'm only going to be away from my project for a couple of hours, but it has lasted longer than that for me before. And I do have quite a few other things that I could touch upon, but I think that is enough for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.